Acetaminophen is one of the most commonly used over-the-counter medications for pain relief and fever reduction. Found in medicine cabinets across the globe and sold under familiar brand names like Tylenol, Panadol, and Calpol, it's a drug so embedded in daily life that most people barely stop to wonder, where did it come from? Who invented acetaminophen? And how did it become such a trusted staple in modern medicine? In this video, we're diving deep into the origins of this everyday medicine and the people who played key roles in its development, right here on History of Simple Things. To understand the invention of acetaminophen, we must look back to the 19th century, when coal tar was being studied for medical uses. At the time, coal tar was a waste product of coal gas production, but chemists were fascinated by its complex chemical structure. From this thick black substance, researchers began extracting compounds that led to the birth of modern pharmaceuticals. It was during this era that scientists started identifying derivatives of coal tar that could lower fevers and relieve pain. Among these compounds were acetanilide and phenacetin, two drugs that would serve as the predecessors of acetaminophen. Acetanilide was introduced in 1886 as an antipyretic, or fever reducer. It was effective, but it came with some troubling side effects, particularly its potential to cause methemoglobinemia, a condition that reduces the blood's ability to carry oxygen. Not long after, phenacetin was developed as a safer alternative. Although it became widely used, especially in combination with aspirin and caffeine, concerns about its toxicity, especially kidney damage and carcinogenicity, persisted. These two drugs, acetanilide and phenacetin, were instrumental in the story of acetaminophen because unbeknownst to scientists at the time, the body actually metabolized both drugs into acetaminophen, which was the compound that delivered much of their pain-relieving effects. The true chemical identity of acetaminophen, known scientifically as paracetamol or N-acetyl-P-aminophenol, was first synthesized by American chemist Harmon Northrup Morse in 1878 at Johns Hopkins University. However, his version of the drug was not explored for therapeutic use at the time. Instead, it sat on the sidelines of chemical literature as a compound of theoretical interest, not medical utility. For decades, acetaminophen remained in the background, overshadowed by its chemical cousins. It wasn't until the mid-20th century that acetaminophen finally received the attention it deserved, thanks to two scientists, David Lester and Leon Greenberg. Their research showed that when people took acetanilide or phenacetin, their bodies converted those drugs into acetaminophen. They concluded that acetaminophen was likely the safer and more effective compound all along, and that it might be useful as a standalone medication. This revelation reignited interest in acetaminophen as a potential drug on its own. Following the findings of these studies, the pharmaceutical company McNeil Laboratories saw a major opportunity. In 1955, McNeil introduced acetaminophen to the American market under the brand name Tylenol Elixir for Children. It was marketed as a pain and fever reliever that didn't irritate the stomach the way aspirin sometimes did. This made it especially attractive for children who were more susceptible to stomach issues and adverse reactions. The launch was a success, and over the following years, Tylenol expanded into adult formulations as well, eventually becoming a household name. The 1960s and 70s marked the rapid rise of acetaminophen use in both prescription and over-the-counter forms. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration officially recognized acetaminophen as a safe and effective analgesic and antipyretic. Its popularity grew exponentially, 
especially among individuals who needed an alternative to aspirin, such as those with ulcers or aspirin allergies. Acetaminophen doesn't significantly affect blood clotting or cause stomach bleeding, which made it the preferred choice for many healthcare providers. Despite its reputation for safety, acetaminophen is not without risk. One of the most significant concerns is liver toxicity, especially in cases of overdose. The liver metabolizes acetaminophen, but when taken in large doses, a toxic byproduct can accumulate and cause liver damage or even liver failure. This has led to a number of public health initiatives to warn consumers about the dangers of exceeding the recommended dose, especially since acetaminophen is often included in combination medications, making it easy to take too much without realizing it. Nevertheless, when used as directed, acetaminophen remains one of the safest and most effective pain relievers available. It's listed as an essential medicine by the World Health Organization and is used globally by billions of people every year. From hospitals to home medicine cabinets, it continues to serve as a reliable and affordable treatment for everyday ailments. So who invented acetaminophen? The answer isn't simple. It's a story of contributions from multiple scientists across decades. From Harmon Northrup Morse's first synthesis in 1878, to the metabolic discoveries in the 1940s, and the commercial development by McNeil Laboratories in the 1950s, acetaminophen is the product of both science and serendipity. It wasn't discovered in a single moment of brilliance, but rather evolved through years of research, re-evaluation, and application. It stands as a testament to the power of medical science to transform something once overlooked into a global remedy. So the next time you reach for a Tylenol, remember, that little pill carries with it over a century of chemistry, curiosity, and human ingenuity. It's a reminder that even the most commonplace remedies can have the most extraordinary backstories. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.